Hi beautiful, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I thought I would show you how I do my makeup when I'm not filming. This is definitely a go-to makeup look for me. I do it all the time. I feel like this is makeup for any occasion. It takes me probably around 30 minutes from beginning to end. It's easy, it's quick. I wanted to just sit down and show you like the steps I skip when I'm not filming versus sometimes I do a little bit more when I film because I have more time. I can be a bit more precise with my products. I'm experimenting with new products when I'm filming or I'm trying new palettes that are more colorful that I want to make work and I want to create glamorous looks for. But realistically, I don't do very overly glamorous looks or overly colorful looks for like day-to-day -day occasions. So I don't know, I thought it'd be interesting to sit down and show you what I do when you're not looking. <laughs> how I do things when I'm not getting ready to be on YouTube. And so yes, I'm excited to see what you think. If you like this video, don't forget to please give it a thumbs up before you leave. If you're new to my channel, my name is Patty. I am trying to upload every single day throughout the month of December. So please don't leave without subscribing. And let's just go ahead and get started. <laughs> I think the main difference between me doing my makeup for myself versus doing my makeup for videos is purpose and speed. I usually do my makeup a lot faster when I'm not filming and how much effort I want to put into things. I feel like majority of the time when I'm not filming but I need to do my makeup, it's usually to like go out to dinner, go shopping with friends, things like that. And since I usually do it in a bit more of a rush than usual, I might skip a few steps. I might not um, pay enough attention exactly to what I'm doing and so I don't know I thought that would be a good idea for today's video I went ahead and applied my Charlotte Tilbury color corrector to my under eyes which is a step I never skip and I also already have my brows done because whether or not I'm filming I always do my eyebrows the exact same way my eyebrows have to be lifted and filled otherwise I feel like the rest of the makeup doesn't matter <laughs> So I went ahead and used my Charlotte Tilbury color corrector underneath my eyes. I blended a bit of it on my eyelid as well. And now I'm using the Beautiful Skin Concealer, also from Charlotte Tilbury, to blend underneath my eyebrows. So I'm using refer brushes as per usual and I am just very quickly blending a bit of concealer underneath my eyebrows. Also, I'm showing you how I do my makeup for most occasions, but if I have a special occasion, even if I'm not filming, I will take more time and I will not skip a step, if that makes sense. This is just kind of like the speedy version of how I like to do things. Also, usually when I'm just doing my makeup for myself, not to film, I go for the boring palettes, okay? So in this occasion, I'm grabbing the new Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes palette and I'm going to blend some of these shades on my eyes for a quick makeup look. Starting with a light shade in the transition as usual and darkening things up with a slightly darker brown shade. I'm packing it on the outer corner of my eye and then blending it into the crease ever so slightly and I'm pretending like I'm doing my makeup for myself so I'm doing it a bit faster I think that I usually go. Same thing over on this side. Because I'm doing makeup for myself and not to film, this is deep enough for me. I just do a couple of shades on my crease and then I move on to my shimmer shade. I grabbed this color right here and I'm just tapping it on with my finger in the center. Only because I'm usually looking for a faster application rather than a more precise application when I'm in a bit more of a rush. But I do always go back with a flat brush and grab my lighter shimmer shade and add it with a brush on the inner corner of my eyes because it doesn't matter if I can do this faster with my fingers. If I do it with my fingers, I will for sure <laughs> ruin my makeup. I just can't get my finger to be precise on the inner corner of my eye. It's just not happening. Those few simple steps on the top of my eyelid are perfect for me if I am just wanting to look like I tried, but I don't want to spend too much time looking like I tried. <laughs> 
So I'm moving on to a bit of an eyeliner in my waterline and I'm going to smudge a bit of that eyeliner in between my lower lashes with a small pointed brush. This is the ref for number three. I'm going to just quickly blend that back and forth right underneath the eye. It doesn't have to be perfect because I haven't even applied concealer yet. I just want to get a bit of a base down there. And before I get to my complexion, I'm just going to quickly curl my lashes. This is a Ref for Lash Curler I've been trying for months now and it hasn't come out yet. It's a slightly different shape from the one they have on their website. And for some reason, it is so perfect for me. I like this shape for me a lot more than the other one. It's just more comfortable to my eye shape. Anyway, it's one product I have been using every time I do my makeup and not film is my Danessa Myricks Balm. And that is because I have redness on my face and I usually like to go for foundations that don't have the most coverage. So I like to do this Danessa Myricks Balm because not only does it hide my pores, but it also covers a lot of my redness. And this way I know that whatever foundation I choose to put on top doesn't have to work that hard. Also, this balm might be the easiest, fastest thing to apply ever. <laughs> I'm going to go for a skin tint because I want something really nice and lightweight. And like I said, I don't need that much coverage anymore because that Danessa Myricks balm did a lot for me. I know this looks crazy, but this is how I apply it when I'm not filming. Sometimes even when I film, I apply it like this. Who are we kidding? But the point is that I don't have to dirty the back of my hand and I can just go in with my sponge and very quickly blend everything. And with the sponge, if it's too much, it'll be taken away anyway. So I'm not worried about applying too much product. Plus when I'm doing my makeup for myself and not filming, I usually go for products that I already know are going to work for me because I don't want any mistakes to happen and I don't want to have to take anything off. I usually go for products that I know I can rely on. I'm going to add a bit right here where I was a bit pink still and go back with my sponge just right here and boom this is how the complexion is looking so again with my reliable products <laughs> i'm going to go in with my ysl number two full cover concealer and just quickly put it everywhere i need it to cover my under eyes and to brighten my under eyes as well because i think the color corrector did most of the covering but this one just brightens so pretty and back with my sponge i just quickly blend it in i swear to you this concealer is my ride or die i love it so now i'm going for my laura mercier tone up powder because i've been relying a lot on this one lately i'm just going to grab some with my sponge because like i said i'm in a rush right and I'm going to very lightly tap a bit of that powder right under my eyes. Very little, I didn't grab much because I would hate for that powder to show up a lot under my eyes. I just want to be bright and I want to be matte. I want my concealer not to move. And I also want to put it there and not have to blend it out. That's how little I applied. <laughs> so with a brush, my Wayne number three, I'm going to apply some more of that powder to the other areas of my face where I don't want to be shiny. Now that my powder is applied, I'm going to go back with the darker matte shade that I use from whichever palette it is I'm using. The only guaranteed thing is that it's going to be a boring palette because those are usually the ones that I go for when I'm in a rush and I just want to do a quick look that I know I can count on. And with my refer number 14, which is a nice fluffy small brush, I'm just back and forth blending that color all throughout my under eye area. And that's it. A lot of the time, I don't even put my transition shade underneath my eye because I feel like if I'm in a rush, it's not needed. This looks good enough to me. So I'm just moving on to apply my mascara, which in this case is my Kirwise mascara that I love. And in a lot of other cases is my Pat McGrath Dark Star mascara. Mascara is on and one thing I definitely do not do when I'm doing my makeup for myself and not filming is apply false lashes. Unless of course it's like a special event. 
and I need to look very very glamorous. I will of course do falsies then but if I'm just going to dinner or a park or like I'm visiting somewhere, things like that, more common things that you usually do, I don't feel the need to do lashes for that so I skip on them. But do you want to know a step I never ever skip? That would be bronzer. So this right here is the M Cosmetics bronzer in the shade Slip. And I'm applying it with a Wayne Goss number one brush. Starting on my forehead and I'm just buffing it into my hairline. And then I'm applying it on my cheekbone. I absolutely love this bronzer because it's easy not to overdo it. It's just a perfect color that I can easily build up but it doesn't become too much you know so this is a bronzer formula that i'm not afraid to really get in there and add more and buff it i know that it's going to look good pretty much no matter what <laughs> i'm not the best at contouring my nose to begin with but if i'm in a rush and i'm just doing my makeup for myself i definitely do not pay much attention to that i just go on the sides of my nose with a big fluffy brush, I don't care to be precise. I just want my nose to have some color. Now lastly, of course, I'm doing my jaw. The one thing I will correct about my bronzer pretty much always is I don't want it to go all the way like down here. I needed to step where the corner of my mouth is. So I just go back with the sponge that I use to blend my foundation and I press it right here so that if I blended the bronzer a little bit too far down, it goes back to where it needs to be. And see, that usually pretty quickly solves the issue. I feel like my bronzer was like all the way down here and now it's here, which is exactly where I want it. So bronzer step is done. And then I usually just go on with whichever blush I'm obsessed with at the moment, which for a couple of months now, it's been my Gucci blush in number four, Bright Coral. And I tap it on the top of my cheekbones. Lately, I've been doing a bit on the bridge of my nose as well. This one is super nice and natural, so also something that I don't have to think of much. I could just pack it on a bit and it's not going to make me regret it. <laughs> For my lips, lipstick is not a must, gloss is not a must, but lip liner is always a must. So I always start with whichever favorite lip liner I have at the moment. I usually have a few in rotation that I always go for. I'm going to use my Natasha one from the My Dream collection from Natasha Denona. And then after I fill my lips, I either go on with a lipstick or a gloss, sometimes both. Today I'm going to use my L'Oreal um, I Create lipstick that I love. It's my favorite shade of lipstick. And it is a really good match for this Natasha lip liner. I love this L'Oreal lipstick because it feels like I'm not wearing anything on my lips. It's the best. Let me put on this coat to pretend like I'm leaving my house to do something because this right here is my final go-to look for when I'm not filming. <laughs> Very basic, I know, but I love it. It's got the sparkles that I like. I have a nude lipstick on. My eyes have a bit of depth, mascara, eyeliner. I look nice and bronzed. I don't know, it's just... A very simple, perfect, harmonious balance of everything I like to have on my face. And I can pretty much do this whole face of makeup in 30 minutes and that is taking around 5 to 7 minutes to do my eyebrows alone. So everything I did on camera right now takes me probably about 20 to 25 minutes. Which for as many steps as I do, even though I am making things a little bit easier, I think is a good time. Uh, <laughs> so yes, definitely let me know what you think of this makeup look. Also, you can wear this makeup year round. There is no occasion needed to wear these particular items because you could literally go anywhere with this full face of makeup, which probably is what makes it a go-to for me. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And also let me know what is your go-to makeup look for when you just want something that is quick and reliable and out the door and you're not necessarily in that moment playing with your makeup or going for any particular look. I'm interested in knowing if you do something kind of similar to this or something completely different. So please let me know down below in the comment section. Also, if you like this video, don't forget to please give it a thumbs up before you leave. If you're new to my channel, please don't leave without subscribing. I love you guys so, so much. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you back in the next video. <laughs> Bye.